Today we'll be talking about how to enable tenants in our vRealize environment. This will set us up for a mini series where in the future videos we can create tenants, migrate tenants, and merge tenants. Before we get into any of that though, let's talk about what is a tenant. We'll go through two different examples. Let's say we're a single organization with support staff, developers, and user base. Each one of those groups has a different set of requirements. We could use tenants to separate them out to provide those necessary resources. Or alternatively, this is our second example, we could be a service provider. We've got company A, company B, and company C. Each one of those companies requires a different set of resources, and we would use tenants to isolate them from each other to provide those resource needs. I've already logged into our Realize Suite Lifecycle Manager, which I'll just abbreviate as LCM. I first want to click on Environments, where we can see we've got our global environment, we've got our 6.7 environment, and we've got our Realize Suite 8.3 environment with VRA. In the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to click on our Services Square. I'll then go to Identity and Tenant Management. From there, I'll click on Tenant Management. This gives us five items we should read through to make sure we're satisfying. We'll also check some of these manually as we go through this process. I'll click on the Enable Tenancy. We're going to be doing a little bouncing around for these first two checkbox, but this first one is asking, did we take a snapshot of our VMware Identity Manager, which I'll just call as IDM. And there's two different ways we can take a snapshot of IDM. The first is using vCenter. The second one is using LCM. We recommend using LCM because it knows how to properly communicate with IDM to shut down the VM, take the snapshot, and power it back on. So let's go ahead and take our snapshot of IDM. I'm going to click on the services square, and then click on lifecycle operations. We'll then click on manage environments. Then we'll click on the view details underneath our global environment. Once that finishes loading, I'm going to click on the three dots, click on snapshot, and then create snapshot. The only thing we need to worry about on this window is providing a name. Because we're powering down IDM, we don't need to worry about taking a snapshot of memory. This process took a little over an hour to complete in my lab environment. And for the entire process, the entire set of steps we're going to walk through today, it took about three hours. We would recommend this to be done during a normal scheduled maintenance window because we will be powering IDM and powering it back on. With that complete, I'm going to click on Environments, and then I'll click on View Details. This allows us to do the Cluster Health Check next, which was that second checkbox we saw. I'll click on the three dots, and then click on Trigger Cluster Health. And then I'll click on the Submit button. And this will do a service status on all the hosts, making sure everything is working correctly. With those two steps done, I'll click on the service squares in the upper right hand side, click on tenant management, enable tenancy. It's like we did this before. Click on the two checkboxes this time, and then click on trigger inventory sync. This goes through the process of making sure we have the latest inventory, and it also checks can we talk to our appliances or not. Once that's done, I'll click on the proceed button. From here, we want to give our tenant a name. I'm going to call it default-tenant, which is the recommended name. Since we're calling it default-tenant, there's two things we need to verify. The first is, is this name in DNS, and does it map to an IP address? And the second one is, is it a part of our certificate? We're using a wildcard certificate, but we'll check that out here in a moment. I'm going to open up DNS, and under our domain name, we can see our default-tenant with the appropriate IP address. To check our certificate, I'll click on the services square in the upper right-hand corner, and then click on locker. From here, I want to click on our certificate. We call it our self-signed certificate, but yours might be different. The main thing I'm looking for on this window is our subject alternative name. In our case, we're using star, but in your case, you may have something slightly different. We want to make sure that whatever name we chose is in the certificate, whether that's using a wildcard or that's explicitly defined. And we've got two entries. We've got one for our domain, and we have one for our VRA environment. So just make sure we see both of those in your certificate. This is the same certificate that's applied to IDM and VRA. I'll then go and click on the Submit button. This will go through the process of configuring our IDM and re-registering VRA with IDM. To track our progress, I can click on the Here button. And in my lab environment, it took about an hour and a half to complete this process. Now that the process is complete, we can verify that it's successfully enabled. I'll click on our Services Square in the upper right-hand corner, click on Identity and Tenant Management, and then click on Tenant Management. While the screen is currently blank, this tells us we successfully enabled tenant management. If we saw the previous window, we know something would happen and something would went wrong. But now that we see it, this will set us up for several future videos. I hope you found this video informative and I'd like to thank you for watching.